So, um, as, as Nina mentioned, uh, LexisNexis Risk Solution works in the financial crime compliance space. Uh, we also provide solutions in the fraud prevention space. And what I'm going to spend the next few minutes doing is to really just introduce you a little bit to how we can use the concepts of machine learning and digital identities to improve uh, the performance of those fraud prevention solutions. What we've seen over the last few years is that digital or online fraud has become increasingly complex. It's become sophisticated, cross-organizational, it's become automated more and more with the use of bots and botnets, and it's also become borderless. There is no respect for borderless uh, in online fraud. The diagram that you can see here comes from our um, cybercrime report that we publish twice a year. And that cybercrime report is analyzing the last six months of our clients' data that we've analyzed for risk. And by looking at this data, we're able to look for risks, growing and emerging trends and threats. What's interesting about this diagram is that it is actually showing the arrows are representing confirmed fraud um, by fraudsters, cyber criminals and rings who are moving throughout organizations and industries. So the individual blue circles there represent individual clients of ours. They may be banks, they may be commerce organizations or any organization that offers services to end consumers online. They're in different industries, they're in different countries. And if we look in detail, if we start at the top right, we can see a cluster of confirmed fraud uh, circling around different banks within the UK. But that fraud and those cyber criminals then are also crossing. So as we move towards the, the middle of the screen and down, we see links to Sweden, to Austria, onto Germany and Switzerland. And as we go to the left hand side into, into Eastern Europe and the Baltics as well. What, we, what, we, what we're learning is that traditional fraud prevention approaches are simply not keeping up with this complexity. So if we look at, uh, at what a traditional anti-fraud solution looks like, if we go back a few years, basically the idea is you have events or transactions that come into a system uh, where you have a rules engine, a list of static rules that analyze the data associated with that event. And those rules are typically put in place by a fraud analyst and the outcome gives you an indication of the risk associated with that transaction. A couple of really simple example rules here is a single computer accessing multiple accounts or is the credit card that's being used in the transaction listed already in the system as stolen. And over time, as more events um, come in and fraud changes, fraud analysts can add to those rules. The problem is simply that the sheer number of events to analyze and that complexity of fraud that I was discussing has become so big that you need an army of fraud analysts to, to keep that static rules engine up to, up to speed. Um, and really, it, it, it can't, you, you can't uh, keep going on like that. So there needs to be an alternative that needs to be found. Let's, to put this real um, and give you really an idea of scale, this is an overview of, of the threat metrics anti-fraud solution from LexisNexis Risk Solutions. It is analyzing on a daily basis more than 150 million events for, for its clients. And that translates into around 30 billion data points and almost 12 billion of those rules firing every single day. Those rules are actually matching and analyzing across that entire global digital network, um, which uses anonymization techniques that allow the rules to bring intelligence in from the network while preserving uh, the anonymity of individual consumer data. The the key thing before we jump into machine learning, I think it's just important to highlight that as you're looking at that sheer scale of data and that global approach, the reason that we're taking that global approach is because the fraudsters are also taking a global approach. 
So we really need to fight a network with a network. If we look at where machine learning plays into that, it can be used in a number of different ways. First one is actually optimizing those existing customer built fraud mores. So those, those rules that I, that I uh, introduced a minute ago, being able to take those models, look at historic data, bring in confirmed fraud data, and then improving those existing models, introducing new rules, introducing different weightings associated with the model um, can provide uh, much more performant results from those models. In addition to this, you're able to actually look at a whole industry. So we could consider all of uh, the banking, online banking industry, for example. And machine learning enables us to develop a, a best practice model across that entire industry, um, elevating the performance of the fraud solutions and also helping new entrants into the market immediately to have a, a good anti-fraud model in place. We've talked a lot about fraud, but actually one of the best ways to really identify the fraud is to focus first on enabling trust. And in a moment, I'm just gonna focus a little bit more on that through the use of, of these global digital identities. The idea there really is to, to take a significant portion of these transactions and really assign a certain amount of trust there and say that we know that these events are good, we can move on and focus on the remaining sample where, where there is likely to be fraud. And then lastly, more generally, just with these vast amounts of data, different machine learning techniques really help us to, to understand that data better, to potentially cluster data in specific ways for further analysis where we think there may be um, further investigation needed, which might reveal emerging fraud trends, for example. So let's focus just uh, in the last couple of minutes on those global digital identities and enabling trust around them. The concept of a digital identity in, in the threat metrics world is basically in real time, every time a transaction comes in, to join the dots of the data with other historic data in the system. And by doing that, you can dynamically form, using machine learning technologies, the, the, digital identities. And here is an example of a, of a real one here. What you can see here is um, an email address linked together with two account login IDs and what we call three smart IDs. These smart IDs are identifiers for a device like a computer or a mobile device. And so that, that digital identity is basically giving a representation of where some of these individual anonymized pieces of data can be combined together um, over a period of time. To give you a real example, how this is useful. If I log into my online banking service today, the system will look at the digital intelligence that's gathered during that login event and will compare that to the digital identity that has been used to log into my account historically. If everything matches or generally everything matches, we can assign a level of trust to my login. If there's a significant difference in the data, then that becomes an alert and the bank can then decide how to action on that. For example, they may decide to, to, to put me through a further level of authentication to really validate that it's me here and not someone else that has managed to uh, gather some of my credentials and is trying to access my account. Let's actually show you some real data. Um, so this is real data from the global network. What you can see are two different networks effectively, and they're linked together by an email address. So on the, on the right hand side, that enormous big circle there is a set of identities all linked to a single red dot in the middle, which is a device. So one device, has all these different identities associated to it, including that email address. And on the left-hand side, that much smaller network, that's actually a much more realistic digital identity, similar to what we saw on the previous slide. So this common email address is being linked to these two different digital identities, where the one on the left is a, a, a real person, the one on the right 
is actually a really good example of an automated bot. So an automated set of attacks coming from one device to try to access lots of different accounts, presumably using some, some compromised um, account information that's been sourced from somewhere. So what machine learning techniques are doing here, when, when the next transaction or the next login event comes in, it's basically evaluating for this email address, is this transaction linked to the real user using their email and therefore we should be enabling access as quick as possible? Or is this an example of this automated bot fraudulently trying to use that email address? So in summary, machine learning techniques are really needed to be able to keep maintaining our fraud prevention defenses against these increasingly sophisticated cyber criminals who quite frankly are using the same technologies in, in their fights. Regulations around AI and data privacy need to enable fraud prevention systems like the one described here to operate within boundaries that, that enable them still to fight fraud effectively. Thank you.